So I thought we might go chronologically sure. and, you know, just maybe, even though it's not um, an ethics question per se, sure. but just in terms of background, like how you got started in journalism and sure. you know, why you wanted to be a reporter and how you got your job and that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you go back, I, I grew up in Salinas, California, and um, I grew up in a kind of an interesting uh, family background. On my mom's side, um, we're a military family, and she was uh, from South Dakota. Um, her uh, parents were uh, Russian and, and French immigrants. My dad's side were immigrants from Mexico. My, um, my grandparents originally uh, came across the country illegally. Um, they got their green cards, moved from El Paso to Salinas to work in the fields. And, uh, and we're one of the first really Latino families to settle there in the, like in the 1930s. And so we have long roots in, in, in Salinas, um, originally working in the, in the fields as, Mexica, as many Mexican laborers uh, find out. My mom met my dad um, uh, in a, on a blind date and uh, he was a high school dropout, she was a high school honor student. And, um, and uh, it was very controversial white woman, Mexican at that time, and they actually threw my wife, uh, or my mother out uh, when she told, them, told my grandparents that she was going to be the wife of a Mexican. And so she actually got placed with a Mexican family. My grandparents on my dad's side lived in the United States for 50 years and never learned how to speak English. So all of their circle were Spanish speakers. So in those days there were long courtships, so she placed them with a Mexican family. And they, she lived with that Mexican family for two, two and a half years and learn totally fully acculturated. And so even though, um, you know, my mom uh, is, uh, we've made her an honorary Latina. And, uh, and so she's uh, 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 been a, a real stickler for education. Her mother was a teacher. So she got me reading at a very early age. Uh, my dad, as I said, was a high school dropout. And when I was growing up, he was a garbage man. And, kind that carried the cans on your back that they didn't have the lifts then. You had to go in the back and empty them. And so we came from a very working class family, but my mom stressed the education. My dad was a great leader, actually. Ended up moving up in city government um, to, a, to a mid-level position, did very well. But um, so I had that kind of, of influence from my mother saying, you need to study, you need to, you need to do education. And so she played games with me of being a reporter. And the first game uh, that I played was being sports reporter, covering, uh, listening to radio broadcasts of the San Francisco Giants and writing down bro uh, 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 box scores. And so every morning I would go and see if my box scores were accurate. And so that's actually what first got me interested in journalism. I wanted to, I wrote, I would this write. This was in like the Maze McCovey. This was in 19, days, 19, right? like 1962. <laughs> I was eight years old. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And so it was Mays McCovey, their first run at, at a World Series. Um, my mom would listen to the games with me, you know, and she, I'd write up my little stories and she'd correct the stories. Um, used to read a lot. Um, they used to have book, book report challenges in, in my elementary school. Uh, and I was fortunate, um, you know, in those days they would actually track students. And most of the students um, who were Latino in my school got tracked in the slow class. I got tracked because of my mother's influence. I got tracked in the high class, and so I would read more, and they would push me to read. Through reading, I really liked journalism. So I get to eighth grade, um, was made uh, editor of the paper there uh, at uh, at the uh, um, the Roundup, it was called, and uh, and so it uh, I was uh, uh, really attracted still to sports writing. I mean, that was kind of my passion. Went to high school, um, didn't take journalism for my first two years, and my junior year I decided to take journalism. And, uh, and um, after the first edition I was named editor of the paper. They didn't have an editor at the end of the year. So for the next two years I was editor of the paper, did really well. Um, but something that was happening in, in Salinas at the time was that Cesar Chavez was starting to organize the United Farm Workers. And, you know, I, it, I was in this really unique position, and the position was, I'm the grandson of farm workers, my cousins were members of the United Farm Workers, and that I was throwing passes to in, on, on the football field were the sons of the growers, and the girls that I were dating were the daughters of the growers. So I, I, was, I was going through this very 
unique perspective of, uh, you know, at the same time, we're writing about some of these issues in, in the Salinas High School newspaper, The Flashlight. So uh, did very well, won some statewide awards in journalism, but still was undecided in my profession. And my senior year uh, in the spring, I was sitting uh, one, at home one day, uh, um, and I got a call from uh, the editor of the local paper um, and said, how would you like to come to work as a copy boy? at the Salinas, California. Well, at the time, I was working at El Charito Market, which was a Mexican tessin tortilla factory, uh, everything. I was really bad on the tortilla line. If you ever saw I Love Lucy, which you had the chocolates and they were for the place, <laughs> that was me on the tortilla line. They'd hit the ground and pick them up, look at anybody was looking, and then stick them in the plastic bag and try to seal it. So um, I didn't think I had much uh, you know, promise there, uh, but they asked me if I would come to work at the Salinas, California. And again, so they knew your work from the high school paper. Yeah, they knew my work from the high school paper. And this is the other connection. The editor was the um, son of the presiding judge of the Superior Court, a man named Eric Rizal, who's a lifelong friend, still live, still see him regularly. Um, and Eric, uh, uh, my aunt, my dad's sister, had been Eric's nanny and family maid growing up. And he, and he really loved my aunt. And he said, how can I repay Maria? So Rick, so he called me up, took me under his wing, and it turned out to be magic. I mean, I'm 18 years old, and there's nobody on staff other than Eric who can speak Spanish. So I'm taken to translate on this world, you know, world important story of Cesar Chavez and the civil rights movement of Latinos that's breaking right there in the Salinas Valley. So, uh, you know, I start stringing, uh, doing side stories, um, even though you know, I'm totally untrained, other than a high school uh, newspaper. And I had a great high school teacher uh, who inspired me and really taught me some basics. But I'm covering stories. I'm stringing for, I, I did some uh, assistant stringing for the Washington Post, Associated Press, writing when people didn't have time. And I'm totally getting into the journalism profession. And so instead of going to a four-year school, I was so hooked by journalism, I decided to go to community college here locally worked 35 hours a week while I was at the paper, continued covering the story, and then I transferred to um, Stanford at the end of two years, would come home on weekends to work on the story. I was just bitten by the bug, and when I graduated from Stanford, I went back and covered some more. So, long story, but that's, that's, that's how I got into journalism, you know. So if people, you know, reading was really important, my mom's pushing was really important, my experiences, um, I think, were, were uh, phenomenally important, and I think the perspective I brought was different.